Today we're going to be talking about integrating functions that have powers of trig functions. Uh, so some important identities, trig identities, that you need to know in order to do this. Um, first one is just the Pythagorean identity, that sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. Uh, this is important. It also allows me to write sine in terms of cosine and cosine in terms of sine. So sine squared theta is equal to 1 minus cosine squared theta, and cosine squared theta is equal to 1 minus sine squared theta. If I take this identity and divide everything by cosine, sine divided by cosine is tangent squared, cosine divided by cosine is 1, and 1 divided by cosine is secant. So here I can write secant in terms of tangent. I can also write tangent in terms of secant. Okay, and if we divide this whole thing by sine, you get sine over sine is 1, cosine over sine is cotangent, and 1 over sine is sine. So I can write cosecant in terms of cotangent or cotangent in terms of cosecant. Um, another thing that we're going to use is the double angle identity for cosine. The double angle identity for cosine is cosine squared minus sine squared. Um, not plus, that would be this one, but a minus. Uh, if we substitute 1 minus cosine squared in here, we get 2 cosine squared minus 1. So what we're going to do here is solve for cosine. So I'd add 1. So we'd have cosine 2 theta plus 1. And then divide by 2, or multiply by 1 half. So we can write cosine squared theta as 1 half of cosine 2 theta plus 1. The next one we're going to look at is the same double angle identity for cosine, but in terms of sine. So if you replace this with 1 minus sine squared, this is what you get. And again, I'm going to solve for sine squared. So cosine squared 2 theta minus 1 equals negative 2 sine theta. So if I multiply this by a negative 1 half, I can switch this around. So 1 minus cosine 2 theta, because that would make this one negative and this one negative, which can be rewritten like this, is another way to write sine squared. So let's go to some integrals. The integral of sine is, of course, negative cosine plus c. Integral of cosine is sine. The integral of tangent, uh, we discovered using uh, the logarithms, uh, is going to be a negative ln cosine of theta plus c. This is one that you could derive, use, turning this into sine and cosine. That's how we made this deriva derivation and do a u substitution. Uh, cotangent, which is cosine over sine, ended up being the natural log of sine of x. Okay, the integral of secant we also did in the last unit is going to be natural log of secant of x plus tangent of x, cosecant, negative natural log cosecant x plus cotangent x plus c. Uh, integral of secant squared is going to be tangent. Integral of cosecant is a negative cotangent. For the integral of tangent, we know that we have the integral of secant, and from up here, we can write tangent in terms of secant. So I'm going to rewrite this integral as the integral of secant squared x minus 1 
then I can integrate that. So the integral of secant is tangent. Integral of 1 is x. We'll do the same thing with cotangent. Cotangent I can rewrite in terms of cosecant. So we're going to replace it with cosecant minus 1. And we'll integrate that. So this will be a negative cotangent x minus x plus c. Um, so the, the story here is we can write tangent in terms of secant, secant in terms of tangent squared, and the same with cotangent and cosecant. For the integrals of sine squared, we're going to go to these two definitions. So for sine squared, I'm going to replace sine squared with this. For cosine squared, I'm going to replace it with that. So the integral of sine squared is going to be 1 half of the integral, 1 minus cosine 2x, Okay, because that I can integrate. So this will be 1 half x minus 1 half sine 2x plus c, or we can write it as 1 half x minus 1 fourth sine 2x plus c. We'll do the same thing with cosine. So cosine is equal to 1 half cosine 2x plus 1. This will be 1 half sine 2x plus x. So our final answer would be 1 fourth sine 2x plus 1 half x for our integral of cosine squared. Uh, so here we're going to use a u substitution. I'm going to let u equals sine of x, which means du will be cosine of x dx. I pick sine of x because that's sort of my inside function and I saw its derivative was here. So this is now the integral of sine to the fourth gets replaced with u to the fourth. Cosine x dx gets replaced with du. So this is one fifth u to the fifth plus c which is going to be 1 fifth sine to the fifth plus c. So I'm going to use that idea uh, to do this. Okay, If I have just a lone sine or a lone cosine, then that's going to be my du. So you're looking for the powers here. This is an odd power, which means I can make, I can pull out a single cosine so here's what I'm going to do. Okay, I'm going to rewrite this as sine to the fourth x, cosine to the fourth x, cosine of x. Okay, so I've got the cosine here like I did here. And when I have an even power, I can replace it with the 1 minus sine squared. So this is going to be sine to the fourth x cosine this to the fourth would be cosine squared squared so this is going to be one minus sine squared squared now at this point you could simplify this out i'm actually going to do the u substitution now and then i'll simplify it so i'm going to let u equal sine of x du is cosine x dx. So the sine to the fourth is now u to the fourth. The 1 minus sine squared is now 1 minus u squared squared. Cosine x dx is du. Okay, so I'm going to FOIL this out. So that's going to be 1 minus 2u squared plus u to the fourth. 
and then I'll distribute through the u to the fourth. So we have u to the fourth times u squared is u to the sixth, u to the fourth times u to the fourth is u to the eighth. So this is going to be one fifth u to the five minus two seventh u to the seven plus one ninth u to the nine plus c. And then I'll replace back in my signs. So this is one fifth sine to the fifth x minus two sevenths sine to the seven x plus one ninth sine to the ninth plus c. So the key with sine and cosine is trying to peel off either a single sine or a single cosine to be your du. So I can rewrite this as sine x times sine squared x cos squared x. Then replace the sine squared with cosine squared. Okay, now I'll do my u substitution. So this time I'm going to let u equal cosine of x, which means du is going to be a negative sine x. So I'm going to do my substitution. I'm going to put the negative out front here. The sine and the dx will be my du. So I'm going to have 1 minus u squared times u squared and then sine and dx are du. So this is going to be negative u squared minus u to the fourth so this will be negative one-third u cubed minus one-fifth u to the five. And I'll distribute through the negative and replace back my cosine. So this will be a negative one-third cosine cubed x minus minus makes this a plus one-fifth cosine to the fifth x plus c. A sine to the fifth. Again, we want to peel off a singleton. So this is going to be a sine to the fourth x times sine of x. Then I'm going to turn this into cosine. So this will be 1 minus cosine squared squared. So my u will again be cosine. My du is sine, negative sine. So this is going to be negative times the integral of 1 minus u squared squared sine x dx is du, and again I put the minus out front there. So I'll FOIL that. So 1 minus 2u squared plus u to the fourth. So I'm going to integrate and I'm going to go ahead and distribute the negative at the same time. So this will be a negative u. Attention and students, we are entering. Great. Right. Uh, minus negative, we'll make this a plus 2 thirds u cubed minus 1 fifth u to the fifth plus c. And then we'll substitute back in our cosine.
Okay, with tangent and secant, we know the derivative of secant is secant tangent, and the derivative of tangent is secant squared. So in this case, I'm going to let my u equal tangent. du is then secant squared. So tangent squared gets replaced with u squared. Secant squared dx gets replaced with du. So this will be 1 third u cubed plus c, which is 1 third tangent cubed plus c. So the identity says that secant squared can be replaced with 1 plus tangent squared. Okay, and then I'll do my u substitution. So my u, again, is going to be tangent. My du is going to be secant squared. So we have u squared, 1 plus u squared, and then the secant squared dx is our du. Distribute that through, so u squared plus u to the fourth, and then we integrate. Place back our tangents. Uh, this one, it's not going to work the same way because I don't have just a single secant squared and I can't get it so that it's an even power. So here what we're going to do, we know that the derivative of secant is secant tangent. So if I can get everything in terms of secant except for one tangent. So this is going to be I'm going to do a tangent squared x secant squared x and then I'm going to peel off one of the tangents secant. So I've got a secant x tangent x. So I know this is going to be my derivative of secant, so I need to turn the tangent into a secant. So again, from the first page there, tangent gets replaced with secant squared minus 1. Times the secant squared, times the secant of x, tangent of x. And sometimes you may pick the wrong thing to replace, you just go back to the beginning if that's the case. So here I'm going to let u equal secant of x. du then is secant of x tangent of x. So we have a u squared minus 1 times a u squared and then secant x tangent x in its entirety will be du. So we'll distribute again, so u to the fourth minus u squared, and integrate. One fifth u to the five minus one third u cubed plus c, and then replace our secant. Okay, so our last one here, uh, I've got a single tangent, so again I'm going to make this a secant, make this secant to the ninth, times a secant of x, tangent of x, and then this will become our du, so my u is secant of x, my du is 
secant of x tangent of x. So this becomes the integral of u to the ninth du. So we have 1 over 10 u to the tenth plus c, which is 1 tenth secant to the 10 plus c. So this is how we deal with integrating special trig functions.